Hey everybody, welcome back to this video. You are joining me for an episode of Weeklies. If this is your first time here, Weeklies is my version of a super casual chit chat video. We'll probably talk about some new things I've bought, some things I've been reading, exploring, um, maybe some sewing updates, life updates. It's really just um, a casual conversation. And as with all things um, that happens when you film a casual video, I'm just gonna let the sun do its thing, okay? It's a nice and absolutely gorgeous day today, but there are a few clouds in the sky and the sun can make up its mind. So, um, if it gets dark, we'll just fix it in post. Fix it, hashtag fix it in post, yeah? And um, we'll just roll with it and see what we get. And just not freak out too much about the production value of this. I just kinda wanna chat and update you on a few things. Um, and we, we Got to talk about candles too. I picked up candles for the first time this weekend um, for this season. So lots of exciting things. Get comfortable. Get yourself a drink. Let's chat. Um, I think we should start off with first and foremost um, a few books I've been reading. I recently went back um, to reread the Mary Kondo um, Spark Joy book. Oh, see what I mean? The sun just went down. Um, this is the illustrated equivalent of um, the life-changing magic of tidying up, I think is what it's called. So there's two versions, um, both in English, but this one called Spark Joy is the, I want to say, uh, the beefed up version. Like there's illustrations in here. <laughs> There's illustrations in here and um, you know, it shows you how to fold the garment. I'm sure you can still hear me. I will fix it in post. Just bear with the weird lighting. And if you've never read um, her previous book, Mary Kondo's uh, The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up, it's essentially a, a guide to a new relationship with your possessions, your physical objects uh, that you keep around in the house. And it talks you through, you know, only keeping the things that bring you joy. Um, I am by no means a minimalist. Um, that type of lifestyle doesn't gel with my personal aesthetic um, in this current state in my life right now. But there are tips and tricks that um, I do want to incorporate. And I do think it's important that things in your life need to bring joy um, or some kind of, you know, value to your life. Not just a practical value, but even just to give you that inner joy or inner peace or inner whatever the heck it is, you know what I mean? So I've been going back to this book and picking up some tips. I've been enjoying it. Like I said, I'm not reading it, you know, page to page and be like, gotta do every single thing. But I do like um, some of the really smart advice she's got in here. Speaking of books and books about organizing and tidying, I have lived, I've been living in this new apartment, which I guess I need to stop calling a new apartment by now for a good gosh um couple of couple of months now and i feel pretty settled and you know you feel settled when the space feels more lived in you know there's more things around and it's less pristine um however being the small space and please like comment down below if you feel the same way that i do that in a small space whenever there are more than say three things out of place i start to feel antsy like I'm feeling, oh, it's getting kind of messy and I feel a little bit anxious and I'm like, oh, I got tidy, I got tidy. I feel like I need to spend a little amount of time every day just for tidying to put things away so I can function in this space effectively. Again, I live in a, a very small apartment by North American standards, so it is a sizable space for me. Um, however, I will say as someone who has um, hobbies that involve material objects, it does become a little bit hard to store all my things I like to do for my hobbies, my sewing, my crafting, uh, my makeup and beauty things and, and whatnot. Um, a lot of the YouTube videos I've been watching um, and research I've been doing um, on small spaces and people who live in small spaces, they do often, not always, but often tend to be minimalist um, with hobbies that don't involve a lot of physical objects. So when you do have hobbies that have bits and baubles, you gotta find storage solutions and stuff like that to make it work in your small space. So I've been reading that. I've also been reading a couple of audiobooks. There's various versions of this um, minimalist or balanced lifestyle um, concept. I 
am in the process of reading an audiobook called Lagom. Um, it is, I want to say, I think the Danish or the Swedish, can't remember, way of living. Um, so I just put it on when I'm crafting and just kind of listen to it. There's various, like I said, various versions of this. You know, the Japanese way, the Swedish way, the Danish way, probably a few others out there as well. So I'm just kind of listening through all of them, picking out what really I feel like gels with me and works with my life. So there's that. Also though, I want to share with you this book that I recently picked up. This is called Recipe Shorts. It's by the author Andrea Stewart. It's delicious dishes in 140 characters. So this is really um, a great book if you know some of your cooking basics. Like you don't need to be taught how to cook rice or how to fry chicken breast or you know, it's really simple stuff like that, boil an egg. But if you know all those things, this book gives you some great um, recipe ideas on how to combine your ingredients and just way to snazz them up a little bit. Because it's in 140 characters or less, the way that it's written is so smart and concise and you're not reading a big long recipe for ages and ages. Um, so it's great. I love that. Every single recipe comes with a color photograph which I love. Sorry guys, so in doubt again. Um, and it's, it's, I think the concept is fantastic. I think it's witty. I think it's great if you're in a rush, you don't want to like fiddle with a lot of things. Most of these things are minimal ingredients and just giving you ideas on how to combine foods. And I like that. I like that a lot. So I'm looking forward to cooking some things from here. Um, yeah, like the way it's written and just so, just so smart. For example, here is a recipe for sage hot bread. It says slice baguette, blend four tea, salt, tid, but er, with slash zest of one lemon and one tea dried sage. Like the way that they abbreviate, I just I think it's hilarious. It's very millennial, if you will, but love it. Five bucks in the clearance section of my local bookstore. I think this was a steal. I'm really happy to have this um, in my collection. So there's this. Um, and if you have an awesome recommendation for um, a book on um, authentic slash traditional Chinese cooking, I would love that. I'm on the hunt for a book like that. I want, you know, like some people go to like the Mary Child's um, book for, sorry, Julia Child's book for like French cooking and stuff like that. You know, I, I want... I want an English version of a Chinese cookbook that really focuses on traditional recipes that I can try out myself and explore and really delve into the ingredients and the heritage. Um, but written in English because I, I can't read Chinese and that makes it a little bit complicated. So leave me some recommendations if you have some. Um, I've been just bookmarking a few of them on Amazon. I might just pick one up and just go through the recipes and really involve myself in the process. I'm, I'm kind of excited about it but I need to find a good book for that. I'm open to both kind of northern Chinese recipes as well as southern slash Cantonese recipes. I have heritage in both, so I'm flexible. All right, let's go and talk about, let's talk about some beauty bits, you guys. Um, over the summer, um, I married off my best friend, or one of my best friends, and with that came a whole, you know, people came into town. Um, I hosted someone on my couch. They stepped over for a few days, um, just just so they didn't have to, you know, rent a hotel and stuff like that, just for a few days. And this friend of mine from high school, she was asking, kind of, what are my favorite everyday shadows? And we were just playing around at night, you know, like doing makeup, like right before bed is a great time to do your makeup because you know you're washing it off and it's low commitment. You know what I mean? So I recommended to her, and I realized I've never actually spoken about these. Um, on here before and I think they're fabulous. These are the Clarins Ombre eyeshadows and they come in little pots. They kind of look like the Giorgio Armani um, Eyes to Kill pots. They kind of look like the Chanel little potted eyeshadows, kind of like the L'Oreal. They have a very similar packaging, usually gold on top and the color uh, matches the sticker on the bottom. These come in a variety of finishes. I've got mattes, I've got iridescent um, colors, and I think these are just excellent, everyday, easy to work with neutral colors. There aren't a ton of colors in here. Some of them come out as limited edition um, products um, along with seasonal collections. There are a few which are permanent in their range. But regardless, I think the formula is great. They're so easy to work with. The colors are awesome. I was introduced to these guys um, in my PR packages, but 
for the price and for the way they perform and the fact that they actually sit on the top tier of my makeup shelf I think these are bomb and I like that you don't have to be you know some of the eyeshadows out there like they're pigmented and they're they're super intense but that can be really hard to work with if you're a novice and you're not super comfortable with like blending and knowing your color placement and stuff like that so I recommended these to my friend um, to check out and they're fairly inexpensive for the quality that they are I, I would say Clarins is a entry level um, high end they're not you know super expensive um, and given how expensive makeup is nowadays even in the drugstore level I think these are a great buy from Clarins again these are the ombre shadows um, part of their permanent range the colors are not that exciting if you're a color lover but all the colors are super neutral super easy to wear I highly recommend these I'll actually just use them all the time so that's these and then I do want to talk about the fresh sugar coconut hydrating lip balm I filmed a favorites video um, actually right before this one but I could only realistically fit five favorite items into a favorites video or else it will be way too long and just way too rambly because I, I like to talk a lot um, so maybe this will go into my next favorites video and I I finished the video I'm like oh I did not mention this so I'm gonna talk about this now this is like I said um, the fresh sugar coconut hydrating lip balm there is a caramel version of this if you were not a fan of the twist up uh, waxy version of the fresh lip balms try this this is so much better in my opinion. I have perpetually wrinkly lips. They're not necessarily dry. They're just very wrinkly all the time. That's just the way they are. Um, and this, I wouldn't say plumps them up, but it smooths the fine lines and it keeps my lips pretty hydrated. It's not a lip treatment, I wouldn't call it that, but it's very comfortable to wear. No sticky residue, it doesn't feel weird. I really dislike the smell of the um, fresh lip balms and the twist ups. I just could not get past the smell. Um, and all of them smell like that. This one, however, smells like coconut. I don't love the fact that you have to use your fingers or lip brush. Um, so clean hands, you guys. However, the product itself is, is fabulous. I love it. So I really enjoyed this one. Okay, let's talk candles. I popped into Bath & Body Works over the weekend. Um, and I'm thinking, you know, we, we finished uh, Thanksgiving. Um, we finished Halloween. There's still Remembrance Day coming up, but that's not really like a celebratory festive holiday. So I think it's okay to start getting excited about Christmas, right? So I went to Bath & Body Works to look for a candle, and lo and behold, they are already like 10 steps ahead of us and have already stocked all their holiday candles, and everybody in the shop is wearing their reindeer ears and they're playing holiday music. I'm not mad about that. I'm actually quite pleased. So I went in there and essentially sniffed all the candles. Now I am not a huge candle person, but with me living in a small-ish space, um, getting like a candle like this really adds a lot of mood and atmosphere to your space. So I went and I got some candles and they were on sale for half, I think about half off. They were $12.95 each. I think usually they're probably in there like 20, they're 20 ish dollars for the three wicks. After much debating, I decided on two. It was a really hard decision, you guys. Um, first one I got is called Campsite Coffee. This is that, um, that like coffee shop scent. You know, if, if it's cold outside and you're walking into your favorite, um, either be it Starbucks or Starbucks Reserve or blends or java bean or wherever that you go um it's it's that smell the campsite aspect is not super smoky they've got a couple of smoky campsite campfire scents and they can be very overwhelming and just too much smoke this is a great blend it's mostly coffee it's rich um but it's not overly suffocating or overly sweet there's a hint of sweetness it's, it's very very lovely i i like this so this went home with came home with me then i also got something that smells essentially like christmas tree this is the white barn fresh balsam um candle so also from bath and body works the white barn um collection i was also very tempted by mahogany teak wood that one is also beautiful but i really don't need three three week 
three wick candles in my very small place so i just got two um this one again has that earthy green scent like like plants right and i don't think i'm going to be able to get a christmas tree in my space like because of space so i'll burn this and pretend i got a tree and you know just sit with my greenery i think it actually might be really cool if you burnt the um, campsite coffee alongside the fresh uh, balsam um, might be a really good mix together very wintry and clearly i picked colors that went along with my home decor too so that helps so love these guys i'm super excited i just started burning the campsite coffee yesterday while i was crafting and it's brilliant i love it so that's those two let's talk a little bit about what i'm working on in the sewing department just real quick i am i really want to start making some things that's kind of in between dressy and casual i find my style swings dramatically 180 one way or the other what i would like to wear is definitely very dressy but i don't always get the opportunity to do so between um you know my work um i need to be very mobile um as well as the weather here it's generally very rainy and wet so being dressy doesn't work out that well especially when you take transit but on the flip side so my other stuff are just super duper casual but i want something in between you know flexible um clothing items so i've been working on this butterick um cardigan with the ruffle sleeves now initially i wanted to make this for the summer clearly i did not get on schedule since i'm still just finishing it up right now but i think it'll be a good piece to wear um, just in and around the house when you're wearing your leggings and your tank top and just throw that on just so you're a little bit more covered and cozy and in the um, warmer weather i can use it as an outer layer piece especially to prevent to prevent sunburn as well which is um, my initial thoughts about making it a lighter fabric so i'm making this one right here i'll show you a close-up later but it's essentially a cardigan with ruffle sleeves it's a um it's got a draped front and a bit of a um a folded neckline it's got no pockets no closures it's really just throw it on and go and casual but can be a little bit dressy because of the ruffle sleeves and just the overall styling so i'm pretty excited about this i'm almost done sewing this i'll um probably share with you on instagram once i'm done also i really want to start again making those in between layer pieces um and i purchased this 1980s i mean come on like if this doesn't scream 80s i don't know what does 1980s um suit pattern but i'm only interested realistically in this outer blazer coat thing i love the idea that it's a bit bigger it's a little bit more oversized but it's got pockets it's got pockets it's got a folded cuff and this is a pattern that can be altered uh, for petite so people who are shorter um straight from the pattern instead of me having to guess and do my own alterations there's fold lines for if you are petite cut on this line instead of that line so i still need to do all the prep work the tracing um the cutting out the fabric the not so fun stuff that i don't love doing but i'm really looking forward to making this i hope it's going to turn out great i have some fabulous fabric i'm going to use so stoked if I give her, if I ever get through and push through the prep work, I think this will be fabulous. So the last thing I wanted to share with you is that I have been talking to someone um, and just learning a bit more about microblading. I've been thinking about it for a while now. I have a couple of friends who've got them done and said it's the best thing ever. Um, I threw this question out there on Instagram and I was surprised at the very divided opinions about it. A few of you said it was, again, the best thing ever. It really helped with your self-confidence, your everyday life. Just one less thing to worry about. And then there were some of you who had the opinion that um, it, it really was a bit quite overwhelming. Like the way that the eyebrows looked, they either looked hyper perfect or they lacked personality or it just looked like a cookie cutter stamp, right? That everybody had these really big, almost quite intense eyebrows. Um, and I am on the fence eyebrows have always been that one one of my insecurities in the sense that it makes such a difference when i have my eyebrows on versus when i don't that it almost becomes a bit of a burden to always have them on um and it takes me a long time to do my eyebrows i've gone faster over time but i would rather spend that five minutes i have in the morning to dress myself up to put on some other makeup i often don't have time for that because i gotta do my eyebrows you know what i mean 
and eyebrows is something that I put on Monday to Friday for work out of necessity um, so that I look a bit more pulled together and that I have expression on my face. I have naturally quite sparse and faint eyebrow hairs. I, I have a, a small amount of actual hairs but they're not very dark and you can see a lot of skin underneath so it doesn't have any shape even if I pluck them there's just no impact there right so I've been thinking about the idea of microblading I've been talking to someone about it I've been saving up money for a while to get it done but I'm still quite apprehensive in the sense that I've never had any type of invasive cosmetic surgery enhancement whatever you want to call it um, like I have my ears pierced and that's really about it I don't have any tattoos and the idea of having something kind of semi-permanent still makes me feel a little bit anxious but at the same time this thing is like you know you can get it done and if it turns out great it's gonna be awesome but you're always you're still a little bit like oh I'm not sure because it is kind of scary it is kind of semi-permanent there are a lot of variables that can happen you know there's a lot of trust happening in a situation like that so I I've been thinking about it um, I'm still kind of slowly saving um, almost there and I feel like I probably will do it, but I want a second opinion. Um, if you have your brows microbladed, let me know what you think. Are you happy with them? Um, are you know what kind of kind of questions did you have going into it? Um, you know the pain level, the the maintenance, all that stuff. Can you just literally roll out of bed and not have to touch anything? put anything on your eyebrows and, and feel pretty happy about them um, would just love to know your thoughts on that I yeah I've, I've been mulling up over it and I think if I were to get it done I would probably get it done over um, the Christmas holidays so I have time to heal before I go back to work because it does have a healing process that you have to go through um, and yeah so I think this will wrap up my weeklies video for this week. It is quite lengthy. I haven't done one of these in a while. I just had lots to share and chat about. I um, hope you have an awesome day wherever that you are. Awesome weekend or start to your week. I will touch base and keep up with you in the next video. As always, hit me up on social media in between videos. Um, check out the new blog, weekendswithg.com over on the WordPress platform drop me a comment whatever you want and i will speak with you next time take care bye